and welcome to Trucks. On tonight's show, Brian's hitting the road with Renault's Master to see if it's not just a rebadged Nissan Interstar in disguise. Tim will be reviewing another big truck and as it's the last show in the series, we'll be taking a look at our most memorable moments. But first... Well, here we are at Whale Tankers in Solihull, Europe's largest manufacturers of wet waste tankers and jetting equipment. Exported to over 60 countries worldwide, from Barbados to New Zealand, and with a staggering turnover of £17 million. The number of tankers we produce is roughly 280 a year. It varies on the, uh, on the build-up of the specifications, but around 280. Our range runs from 3.5 tonnes to 44 tonnes. Uh, vacuum tankers, jetting equipment, winter gritting equipment, uh, all sorts of powers and pressures. Vacuum tankers have sucked from 100 feet down. Jetting systems that have got uh, pressures of a, uh, a tonne per square inch. Uh, not ideal for your uh, kitchen units, but for uh, drains up to two metres in diameter, superb. The tankers are produced at this six acre site, employing 160 people. But with so many varied applications, what factors are considered when designing a tanker? Each design for a tanker, again, it depends on the complexity of the sales specification and the type of truck that we're being asked to put the equipment on. But it can take anything from a couple of hours to over a month. The kind of tankers that we build are anything from a small van an escort van, for example, right up to articulated 44-ton trailers. Tankers have got to be durable and easy to maintain. This 3D cab facility makes the design process more effective. This is because the designs can be simulated on the screen before the body is produced for real. This eliminates the need to manufacture expensive prototypes. Each tanker we design is a bespoke machine Customers have contact with our sales team. They go in and they discuss what the customer's individual requirements are. So it's uh, an integration of drivers, fleet managers, chassis dealers requirements all built up into one sales equipment spec and uh, the design is tailored to the individual needs of the customer. Our customers are chiefly the uh, water companies, the public utilities, work local authorities, uh, contractors, private contractors and of course hire companies that supply the same people. But now it's time for Brian and the Renault Master or is it the Nissan Interstar in disguise? Throughout the series you might think that these vans are starting to look very familiar. Well they are because the manufacturers do what we call Badge engineering. This is to share body parts, i.e. floor pan, body shells, and fit their own mechanics. This, though, makes for a reliable, good quality van, and at the right price to you. Does this look familiar? Well, it should do. For the same body parts as the Nissan Interstar, and also the Vauxhall Navano. And if you look carefully, Citroen Relay. The vehicle itself on the outside is just a great big box. Not the best thing to look at, although the new shaped one with the great big headlamps on it, like a pair of eyes and the smiley grille, a bit like some of the other vehicles we've mentioned. Now, if you've got a great big box, what's the best thing to do with it? Advertise on it. So it might look the same as the others, but what does it drive like? Let's go and find out, shall we? Right, this Renault Master, this particular one is a 2.5 turbo diesel. Very talky beast as well. Plenty of low down grunt. Now they also do on this a 2.2 and a little baby 1.9. But in all honesty, with the fuel consumption running at about 31 MPGs, then you might as well go for the 2.5. Get a little bit more power and quite a bit more torque. This particular vehicle is 3.7 metres long, but they also do a 2.7 metre long one. And both of the vehicles will take the UK size pallet or a Euro pallet in the back, winding up between the wheel arches to take a Euro pallet. One 
one of the other good things about the Renault Master, which has a massive advantage over its competitors, is servicing. This beast will do 18,000 miles between services. Now that means you're going to be on the road a lot longer than any other manufacturer's vehicle. The only thing I would say about the servicing is if you're buying a new vehicle, make sure you take it to a main dealer because your warranty may be invalid if you do not get the book properly stamped by a main dealer. And they do have cam belts on these, and you must make sure if you're clocking up the mileage that they're changed, and a main dealer will do that. They might all look the same. The panels might even be the same. But what's going to make the difference on the residual value is the name. Now Vauxhalls, where they're Vauxhall Nirvano, they always hold a good residual value. They've been in the commercial market and the car market for a long time. You've got the Renault Master in second spot. Now Renaults have always had a good marketplace in the UK, but their residual values do struggle a little bit. You've got the Citroen Relay. Now that in third spot has always struggled, not had the best residual values on those at all. But the wild card in the pack, the Nissan Interstar. Now Nissans have always had the small pickups and the little vans and they have struggled in the past to hold a good residual value. But what about this new Interstar? It's a good looking van. How will it hold up? You can get three different engines for this particular Renault Master. They do a 1.9, 2.2 and a 2.5. Now they range from 82 brake horsepower to 115 brake horsepower. They're all common rail diesels, turbos which gives a good, good output. Now, also on these vehicles, 18,000 mile service interval, so they've got to be reliable. Good, solid engine, just watch out for the cam belts on them. Now, we've road tested the vehicle. It might look the same as all the others, but at the moment, it does drive a lot better. Now, the only thing keeping this off a number one spot is the badge, but there are a lot of extras on this that you don't get on the other vehicles. Now, for price and all the deals that are about at the moment, if I was buying a brand new vehicle, the Renault Master would certainly be my choice. Thanks, Brian. So basically, the Renault is the same as Nissan's Interstar and Vauxhall's Movano. Now, earlier on in the show, we were looking at the design of tankers and their various applications. But what actually goes into the manufacturing? There um, can be up to 15 stages in the process. Um, we've got design, we've got the um, tank build, we've got the fabrication, we've got the assembly of the tank on the chassis, and after the paint it um, will go back to test again and rebuild, and then finally PDI and the customer receipt. The first thing you need to do to make a tanker is to calculate how many litres you want it to carry, because this will determine how long the tanker is. Here, the mouth steel is cut to length by this plasma machine, which is behind me. It's then welded and the join is ground down until it's smooth. The steel tube is then topped and tailed with end caps. If you're transporting a fluid that requires to be temperature controlled, like milk for instance, the tanker body would need to be encapsulated with a thermal covering, so that the liquid inside stayed at the same temperature just like the tankers we saw in the last series at Massey Tankers. Ooh, I'm actually inside a tanker. Can you believe it? Now, one of the things you might not know about these things is they have walls inside, internal walls. This is one of them, it's called a baffle. And what that does, it's there to stabilise the transfer of load, i.e. the liquid that's in the vehicle when the vehicle breaks and when it goes round corners. As it happens, this company don't build tankers that transport food liquids. Instead, their tankers range from vacuum tankers to cesspit emptiers, sewer jets, gritters, gully emptiers, water tankers and diesel refuelers. Which just goes to show, tankers ain't just one long tube plonked on the back of a chassis. Now this gully emptier is equipped with a Maestral 400 exhaust compressor for heavy blockages. It's also on with a 5-inch full-bore gully arm. The low volume jetting allows it to clean roadside gullies, empty drains, clear bockies and wash down the area afterwards. It makes it a very, very flexible vehicle. Now, these vehicles aren't just used by county councils and municipalities for street cleaning. They're also used on major clean operations, such as on farms, 
for like the foot and mouth, things like that. This blaze at Gritter has some impressive computer technology. Now for the science. Now this machine logs the salt spreading records, for instance for the start time and also the distance covered by the vehicle. This vehicle software also notes the identity of the driver and vehicle using PIN numbers. And the information can be stored on computer and downloaded to company records. You can also fit GPS, which means you can pinpoint the exact location of the vehicle. So that's how they're produced. Join us after the break when we'll be taking a look at the extensive after-sales service here at the factory. Also, Tim will be taking a look at another big truck and, of course, as promised, the highlights of the series. Welcome back to Trucks. So far on tonight's show, we've been taking a look at the production of tankers and their various uses from gully wagons to road gritters. Later on in the show, we'll be taking a look and having a further insight into after-sales care. But now it's time for Tim's final truck test of the series. So what have you got for us tonight, Tim? Well, today I have road testing a vehicle that's plugged a gap in the range of one of Europe's leading truck manufacturers. In fact, not only has it plugged a gap, since it's launched earlier last year, it's become one of the great success stories for 2002. It's a vehicle that we featured a sneak preview of at its launch at the Rice Show in Amsterdam in the last series. Now, the name of the truck that I'm talking about is the Axor, and the gap in the market that I'm talking about is the small cab Arctic sector. The UK tractor market is dominated by fleets, and what fleets are looking for is basic simplicity and practicality, and that's what the Axor offers to uh, those customers. Now, most truck manufacturers have got two range types in their Arctic sectors. We're talking about people like DAF who've got the 85 and the 95. You've got Scania with the P cab and the R cab. And you've got Volvo with the FM and the FH. Now Mercedes only had the Actros and that was a big cab. Now that's a glaring gap in their range. That was until now. So Mercedes hopes are pinned on a unique combination of the tried and tested components, including an Atigo cab and the Actros driveline. The Axor is narrower than the Actros and about two to three hundred millimetres lower as well. And the cab retains all the quality aspects you can expect from a Mercedes. So, what does it drive like? And more importantly, has it been worth the wait? Well, come with me and we'll go and find out. Here we are inside the 2543. Now this is the most powerful Mercedes Axo. They have a 350, they have a 400 and a 430 and this is it. It's actually 428 horsepower as well. Now it's a 12 litre engine and it's matched to an 8 speed gearbox. You do have the option of a 16 speed but I must admit I do like it. It's very much like, it's a Mercedes gearbox, it's a, an 8-speed and it's a double H pattern, very similar to get with the ZFs, uh, but you haven't got the, um, the actual splitter itself, so it's a nice range change, push it across, double H pattern, very simple, and that's what I like on these sort of vehicles. I don't like a complicated gearbox, and Axor is perfect for that. Very simple, nice, uncomplicated. I'm doing about 1200 RPM and we're doing about 45 miles an hour and we're in the green zone. The green zone in here stretches from about 1100 to about 1500. So you've got 400 RPM to which, what I'll call the sweet spot for this vehicle. When it comes to fit and finish, it's typical Mercedes. It is well put together. It's Teutonic, which is a good thing. I quite like it. There's no rattle and rolls about it. It's very, very well put together. It oozes quality, which is a really good thing. The vehicle I'm testing today is the 2543 LS 6x2 Axor Tract Unit. It has the Mercedes OM457LA 12 litre engine. 
that's 428 horsepower at 1900 rpm and has a torque of 1550 pounds foot at 1100 rpm the gearbox is a mercedes xp double h range change gearbox the cab is a single bunk super cab which has an unladen weight of 7405 kilograms well was it worth the wait for me it's an emphatic yes Axor is well put together, it's clinical, and clinical is a good thing as far as I'm concerned, and it oozes efficiency, which ultimately means for me it's a quality vehicle that gives someone a quality service, and it certainly does show that Mercedes have plugged that important small cab Arctic sector gap that they had. Producing a new tanker is only one part of the story, as looking after it, after it's sold, is vitally important. Here the company provides a comprehensive after-sales service, plus a refurbishment facility. Well, tankers are subject to annual inspections and these are undertaken here. They also undertake minor refits through to the major refurbishment programmes. Special testing includes ultrasonic tank thickness, which analyses structural integrity. Once tests has been finished, we then rebuild it with all the pneumatics, hydraulics, electrics are all built before it goes for a final test process. Now this company can undertake a service at any customer's premises as they have a mobile task force that are out to repair anywhere. They also have a fleet of technicians that in essence have fully loaded vans and are mobile workshops so they can carry out inspections at any time. In many cases, a tanker or gritter and its equipment will outlive the vehicle chassis that it's mounted on, so the tanker body can be remounted onto a new chassis and repainted. This will save you big money on buying a whole new tanker vehicle and is known as remounting. The issues the company are facing over the uh, coming years are uh, custom demands. Customers are always looking for more, more power, quieter vehicles, uh, more carrying capacity and of course all at a lower price. Unfortunately, that's it for the series. Well, that's not quite true, because coming up next are some of our favourite highlights from the series itself. Welcome to another heavyweight episode of Trucks, and have we got a treat in store for you tonight. So, you think commercial vehicles are boring, no street cred, think again. Absolutely brilliant, nice interior, but is it a practical commercial vehicle? Let's have a look in the back. Now, as we can see, this particular vehicle is a semi-high top. Now, it has nine cubic metres of load space in the back, and above us, a very nifty little luggage rack there. Behind me, a nice little safety cage. Now in the cabin, we've got a lot of new luggage space here for all our documents, cup holders, and this very nifty fold-down clipboard. Now this particular vehicle is a 2.8 HDI engine. Now that's producing some 127 brake horsepower. That's a lot of performance for a small van like this. So I think the best thing we can do is take it for a road test and let's see how it performs. You can get machines to just about do anything you want nowadays. You can, can't you? But I think you're a little bit spoilt, Tim. Oh, you're joking. In oh, fact, man. I think you're a bit of a couch potato, actually, so let's get you doing some work. So, I've decided to let my hair down and go for one of the top of the range Arctics. It's trendy! It's big! It's powerful. I don't know. Tim gets to have all the fun. Who knows when I'm going to get the chance to do it? It 
really is the end. Oh. Stop weeping, Tim. Anyway, <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed the series as much as we have. And all that remains to be said until the next series is... Keep, keep on, on trucking! trucking. make the next series even better than the last two, we'd like to hear from you. You can email us at menandmotors.co.uk and tell us what stories you want to see on trucks. Whether it's a truck test, an issue related to your job or the truck industry in general. And the best stories will be on the next series. <laughs>